always striving for some new technological innovation. Who cares about the company? What about us? And that's certainly the case in Monsters Incorporated. Hey. That's right, baby. Uh -huh. In every story that we create at Pixar, there is something in the story that is something we don't know how to do. I love working with that big guy. We don't want to just repeat ourselves. We want to, you know, push the envelope technically. So whatever they say, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that. I'm thinking now. I've got used to that, but they're probably going to figure it out in a couple of days. <laughs> do you hear that? It's the winds of change. This film's always been a film about a uh, big hairy monster. You're the boss, you're the boss, you're the big hairy boss. And that, of course, got everybody very worried initially because fur in general is one of the hardest things to do in computer graphics. Sullivan is in about 600 shots in the film. On a big furry, eight foot tall monster, you need to have about three million hairs. Is that a joke? Tell me, you're joking. Can you imagine if, like, you had an animator who had to go through and animate every single hair? That would just... They're just driving them insane, basically. All our animators would quit. That's it. I'm out of ideas. We're closed. We had to figure out a way for that hair to move automatically. And that's the genius. We engineered a whole dynamic system that basically let the animators not have to worry about that at all. Our animators just move the character. And then computationally, all the fur figures out how to move itself. And that allows us to achieve a level of visual complexity that we never could without this dynamic, intelligent fur. So he'll do this movement. And the fur is aware of gravity and some sort of wind resistance. And it responds appropriately. And uh, the same thing is true of cloth. When I move my arm, this is very sophisticated bending and folding of that cloth. It's just completely random, and, and, it, and it moves, you know, all over the place. So we came up with a dynamic system, just like the hair, that deals with the cloth. This is perfect. <laughs> the animators could just have Boo run around and be cute. And after the animation was done, we would apply this automated animation to her T-shirt that would figure out how everything should move and fold. The software that we're using is simulating the basic laws of physics, such as the bending and the stretching and the shear and that kind of thing. The nightmare is over! The dynamics puts us into a whole different realm where you're not asking an animator to create motion, but now we're asking a computer program to create motion. And so the cloth moves by itself, the fur moves by itself, and this is where we put a tremendous amount of energy. What a plan! Simple, yet insane! The door vault is pretty amazing at Monsters, Inc. It's got something like 23 million closet doors stored in it. Whoa. Oh, boy. We literally... A little afraid of, uh, you know, the complexity and the technological challenges that we had to actually make this environment to look believable. They're like, no, it can't be done. Yeah. a little piece of paper and so it's very efficient to render but it tends to look from medium to far distances just like a real door i still don't understand basically what i did was uh create a, a sort of program that figured out exactly how the door should move oh if the door is going around a curve then it needs to swing out to approximate that centrifugal force there's this really nice organic um quality to it it looks almost like a traffic jam in san francisco we're working on scenes right now that involve sullivan and the himalayas you have to be extremely foggy, so to give this feeling of, you know, coldness, very hostile environment. No! 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 Uh, everybody was uh, a little afraid of, uh, you know, the complexity and the technological challenges that we had to actually make this environment to look believable. They are like, no, it can't be done. Yeah. But in particular, we have two specific sequences that happen to be in completely a snow environment under, like, a snowstorm. Yeah. But then, then you tell them to say, you know, come on, you can do it. You can do your ass up. You're still not listening. No! We actually do model those snowflakes individually that fall. And we have to take into account things like the wind, because the wind also would affect the way Sullivan's fur moved. Sullivan is launched from a, a toboggan. He's been outside in a snowy blizzard for a long time, so what we would expect is that he would accumulate snow in his fur as it's falling from the sky. And we attached individual snowflakes to the hairs. We would determine how likely it was that there would be a snowflake there based on how long he'd been outside, what direction the wind was blowing, and how he hit the snow when he landed off the sled. You know, we really sweat the details. <laughs> well, James, that was an impressive display. Oh, just
just doing my job, Mr. Waternoose. Of course, I did learn from the best. <laughs> We were really looking at a very interesting challenge when we started Monsters, and that was the challenge of simulation. Between Sullivan and Boo, Boo has a simulated shirt, Sullivan has simulated hair, we were looking at um, probably somewhere in the order of 900 to 1,000 shots that we're going to have simulation. So we're really introducing a whole new step in the pipeline. Um, it's the first time we've actually used simulation in production, and so we were concerned about some of the technical issues that might come up with simulation. So what we decided to do is that because it was something that was really going to have to be done all the time, um, we would restructure things a little bit. We needed some of the real, how should I say, intellectual manpower that we have in, a, in an effects department to solve some of our more challenging simulation problems. But at the same time, we needed sort of the infrastructure of a department that's really used to dealing with every single shot of the film. And so what we did is we took rendering that had that infrastructure in it, and we took effects that had that, that brain power, and we mushed them all together, and we added some people and trained everybody on simulation and came up with the shots department. Um, a great benefit of doing this was that we had an incredibly diverse set of skills within that department, and so we could tackle all, all kinds of problems. So things that we normally would have done through the standard modeling animation kind of pipeline, like um, the hazmats when they burst in and swing down on the ropes, or Sullivan when he's running through the hallway and he's got the, um, the blanket hanging off of his shoulders. It needed to look like a blanket. It needed to look like there was something underneath it, but you don't want to give away the punchline that Boo's actually under there. Um, little things, like uh, things you wouldn't even think about, like tears. Um, and in, in particular, I think that the, the most fabulous use of the tears was with Sullivan when he says goodbye to Boo. You really get a sense that Sullivan is just, he's welling up, he's near crying, and, and that that glassy, almost crying look on the eyes is really spectacular. So it was a lot of fun. We got all of the oddball challenges of the film got thrown into this department. <laughs>